Hello, and welcome to Dare to Dream podcast, award-winning, nominated for People's Choice Podcast Awards, as well as a Webby Award. I have been on air and on podcast for over 13 years. <laughs> so thank you for always joining me on this amazing, auspicious journey. Today is going to prove to be an amazing show. I'm returning a guest who's been on before, so you can listen to his first interview. Just search under youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger or under Apple Podcasts for Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. And my guest today is Glenn Harold. My question is, are you ready to live an abundant, prosperous life? If so, he's your guy. Glenn Harold is an author, musician, and experienced clinical hypnotherapist who has helped thousands of clients over a wide range of stress-related problems. Glenn is an award-winning British hypnotherapist and self-help author. His hypnosis recordings have been downloaded over 10 million times. He writes self-help books and produces hypnotherapy CDs that are number one in the self-help audio chart every year. And Glenn was awarded a gold disc for sales. He's got over 20 years experience as a clinical hypnotherapist in one-to-one -one therapy sessions. And in recent years, Glenn has worked with high-profile celebrity clients. He was made a fellow of the British Society of Clinical Hypnosis. You can find out more about him at glennherald.com. It's G-L-E-N-N-H-A-R-R-O-L-D.com. And he's got a free gift for you. Go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger so you can get yours. It's a bit of a long URL, um, but it is a self-hypnosis guide PDF ebook plus a mindfulness for releasing anxiety MP3. So you can use his work right now. Again, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. So you can click on that hyperlink there and also see me and my guest. Thank you in advance for leaving us a five-star review and for subscribing to this channel and letting your friends and family know about the show. The Dare to Dream podcast is ranked number one in self-improvement on Apple Podcasts in the USA, and also ranks top 50 in other countries around the world, including Portugal, Canada, and France. And that's because of you, so thank you. I'm Debbie Dashinger, I'm a certified coach. My expertise is visibility in media. I coach people like you to write a page turner book, take your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, fully done for the author program, and I pull back the curtain. So you have the system. You learn how to be interviewed on media and podcasts to get massive results called the ultimate visibility formula. I show people how to find and use media exposure to locate their tribe, fill workshops, sell books, and gain exposure now. You can get your free tools and templates and connect with me at debbiedashinger.com and very excited to have you there. And welcome to the show. Glenn, Harold, welcome back to Dare to Dream. It's just been two months since you were on last time. So I want to ask you what's been going on in the past couple of months. What's new? I know you're traveling right now. What are you doing? Yeah, well, I'm in the UK at the moment. So we've come over for uh, my son Lee's wedding because he got married on Monday. Oh. And uh, yeah, this yeah, it was uh, an amazing ceremony. It was really a brilliant ceremony at the Bhaktivedanta Manor, which is the Hare Krishna temple in London, mm -hmm. just outside London in a place called Watford. And um, it's an amazing place, the Bhaktivedanta Manor. is the place that George Harrison bought for the Krishna guys back in the early 70s. And because it was John and George that kind of pop helped to popularise the movement. And George bought this manor house for them in London. I'm not kidding you, this place today is probably worth 
well over 50 million pounds. Wow. It's an incredible wow. place. And the thing with it is the Krishna movement is really thriving in London because of they've got this amazing base. Mm. And yeah, Lee's wedding was there. And when you go to the place, it's like you, as soon as you drive in through the gates, it's like you know, all the craziness and madness of the outside world just disappears and you you feel the energy in there. It's completely different because all of the monks that were and you know lived there, they're of service to the local community and they're immersed in spirituality 24-7 and it's their life. Mm. And and when you it struck me when was there that they seem so happy you know they're living a very sort of simple austere life in some ways because they're getting up at four in the morning and they're chanting and wow. in meditation for wow. hours on end and then they go out and they feed the homeless and that kind of thing mm. but they all seem so happy and so alive you know when you're out and about at the moment you know you're meeting people there so many people are fearful and anxious because of what's going on in the world but these these people are living a different life, a different vibrational frequency they're tuned into and just experiencing life in a different way. So yeah, it was, it was brilliant to be there at the temple and, and just to feel that energy. And obviously it was amazing to see Lee get married and have this amazing, fantastic ceremony. Mm. So yeah, that was, it's been a really great week. That's awesome. Well, congratulations, Lee, Lee. Glenn's son is also a hypnotherapist and offers sessions. And um, I've had several with him. He's, um, you know, from the, the acorn doesn't f fall far from the tree. He's also very amazing and he's a beautiful person. So congratulations, Lee. I hope you're watching this. That's amazing. And I, I'm Thank so you. happy for all of you. Um, and I found out I didn't realize you were a Cancerian like me. Our birthday is only six days apart. So you're June 21st, well, I'm, I'm June 27th. Yeah, well, I'm just on the cusp, but because I was born early in the morning, I'm a Gemini. Oh, that's interesting. I was born before midday. So I'm a Gemini and uh, it's, yeah, bang on the solstice. So I checked in Midsummer's Day and um, yeah, yeah, I've kind of got all the Gemini traits. Lee's a Gemini as well, so we kind of we're very in tune with each other. Oh, that's nice. Gemini's are chatty. I found they're very chatty, very social. Yeah, yeah, we can talk the hind legs, hind legs off a donkey, as they say. <laughs> I've had many Gemini friends, so yeah, it's it's awesome though. It's great skill to have. Um, and it, but it also because if you are on the cusp, that also means you're you've got a lot of properties being in the first week of that solstice that you've also yeah. got all those heart-based very loving connecting properties from the cancerian uh, oh, okay makes sense yeah, the last time you were on the show you were saying sometimes you would start a recording and you would say ah oh, no i'm gonna have to start that all over again you know i want to connect with my heart first and then you can feel it through your recordings like mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something very genuine there that comes through the recording to the recipient listening. Yeah, I, when I record, I have to get in the right zone. And it's, you know, sometimes I'll script a recording and then I think I'll record it. I've got a bit of time now, you know, I've got a four hour window, so I'll record it. And, you know, I, if I ever try to rush it or push it and I'm not in the right mm. frequency, the right energy, my voice is different. It doesn't, it's not right. So I have to get into that sort of state to be, uh, you know, where I'm projecting, you know, projecting and, and putting the feelings into the recording because people feel it. You know, I guess I often get that feedback, you know, people really feel it. So yes, that's so important. Yeah. yeah. When you say that it, it makes me curious. It's almost like your voice can create what solfeggio does or binaural mm. beats do. It sounds like there is also a vibration within your being and voice that can create the yeah. feeling outside of even the words or your methods. Yeah. And I actually know when I've got it. I've mm. got, I know when I've got it. And sometimes when I haven't got it, I can't force it. I've just got to relax into it and let it come. It's like it's when you're a musician, so you understand, you know, you when you sing, you, you know when you're on it, don't you? Or you're playing, you're, there's a certain time when you get in that sweet spot in the zone. 
yeah and you feel it and it's the same with making meditations you know when you're in the zone it just flows and the you channel phrases and you know it's not, it's lovely so why why glenn did stress of all things attract you as a niche to offer to people why in your career have you mostly talked about anxiety and sleep and stress to offer relief why are they prevalent suppose because those issues are so big in this day and age you know there's so many people struggling to get to sleep at night because you know they're on devices too long and you know they're wired and and all the fear and the anxiety in the world you know it's it's never been as bad as it is at the moment so it just makes sense that and the recordings naturally do that you know even if i've even if i make a recording on a certain subjects say like weight loss you know a lot of people say sometimes you know they haven't lost as much weight as they wanted to but they're sleeping much better <laughs> so it's always sleep is always a byproduct of meditation mm -hmm. whatever the theme is so and i just yeah i really um you know like making i like making recordings that are effective you know that really have got the something in them that i you know if i make a recording now i can tell if it's got that sort of ingredient that's going to really connect with people and and i put the recordings out there i did a, i've done a couple recently one called awaken and ascend which is you know really strong a spiritual recording which you know gets people into their chakra energy and takes them on a real journey, spiritual journey and another one called let go of fear um and those recordings i knew when i made them they've got something special and they'll have a long long lifespan mm. i can tell people will be getting you know a benefit from those in five ten years time well because i listen to your hypnosis recordings literally every day i have and i have your app on my phone i have taken to i don't know i get i have by the way i have gemini 2 in my relationship my house mm. of relationship so there's a few uh, astrology houses like that. Gemini's get bored easily, right? We like challenge and change. So I, I, yeah. I literally buy a couple of your recordings about every week, anywhere from two to four. And I realize I'm almost maxed out. I almost have like literally everything you've ever created. And then I saw on your website right. membership platform and I thought, oh, so what is that? What does that offer? So the membership platform came about because uh, we had a number of apps on the Android app store. And for some reason, only known to Google, they just suddenly took them all down. And they, they kind of sent us a vague message saying that uh, they were too similar. The recordings were too similar, but the, tit the titles were, were different. What it had, we'd evolved it over time where we'd put the whole of the app, everything we've got in each app, so the whole catalog you give it we give away a number of free ones and then the, the rest of the titles will be there as in apps and we duplicated that across a few apps not realizing you know and then about a year a year ago they changed the rules and we it was in the small print we didn't see it and they deemed that we were spamming the store you know it's the last thing i'd ever do um so all of our apps came down we managed to get one back up relax and sleep well and we morphed them all back into the to that one so you know, anyone who'd lost any apps, we gave them codes to get that one back. So at that time, it made me realize, you know, I'm not in control of what I'm selling here. Mm. You, know, you think you put out an app and, you know, you're selling to the public, but you're not in control. Google or Apple can change that in a heartbeat, as we found out. So at that point, I thought I'll build a membership site, have all of my content on there um, and add new content, uh, videos and kind of interact with the people on there. Mm. and you know, that was the reason it came about and it's developing over time you know i want to really add value to it and um you know i've done that by adding a number of videos so if somebody on the membership site has got a particular issue they want to get over something uh and it's something that would can you know connect with a number of people then i'll make a little video on that for that person and then we'll stick it up mm. on the membership site and there's e there's ebooks on there. There's uh, yeah, videos, um, and I do webinars there exclusively for members. So, yeah, that came about because we lost our 
Google app. So, yeah. And that's a pay to play <laughs> membership site? Yeah, it's £12 a month if you sign up for a year, or it's 15 a month if you just sign up for the month. So, Beautiful. yeah. Yeah. And it's got oh. every, everything, 140 meditations on there. Wow. Wow. So, so yeah. <gasps> okay. Uh, yeah. So, okay, that's why you went into stress and insomnia and, you know, just to address the things that all these people have been through. And I know you yourself, when you were on the show last time, you were sharing that you were raised in Belham, London, in the UK, and that you had kind of a rough childhood. And in a way, yeah. you were expressing that you're a miracle because many of the people in your neighborhood or that you ran around with ended up in not so good circumstances, including prison. And it very well could have been you, but for the grace of God and the other choices you made. So today you're such a world away from those self-destructive patterns that you had originally. And you've done okay for a kid who didn't finish school at 15 years old. How did you, Glenn, learn to look in the mirror and just love the person that you see? Was there a turning point? Was there a breakthrough that allowed you to love and to receive yourself? It wasn't a, a single moment. It was a gradual progression over time because you know, as I said before, I was a young kid. I was, I grew up in a very dysfunctional, you know, quite a violent household. Um, you know, I ran around with a gang that was quite violent. You know, there was lots of, you know, and I, was, I was talking about it yesterday, actually. I was on um, an interview on Insight Timer. And I remember the time when I was literally a couple of times when I was beaten by gangs and I was completely out for the count. And it's still on my medical records today, one of those where I was just beaten up so badly. I was unconscious, my jaw was over there, black eyes, I was just in a mess. And, and you know, I was just in a really bad place. I was a part of my home life. So the home life was violent and unpredictable and chaotic. And I was, so I hung out with kids on the street who were, came from broken homes as well. You know, it's a, it's a vibrational thing again. You know, when you're running on that, you connect with people on the same frequency. And, you know, it was just, life was such a struggle. It was so hard, you know, because I was always in trouble. I was taking drugs and drinking to sort of submerge the pain and the trauma of it all. And I didn't know any better than that. You know, I just thought life was like that. I used to wake up in the morning with this heaviness and this sort of feeling of doom and gloom and, you know, the feeling that bad things are going to happen. It was the old, uh, law of attraction in the opposite. And, um, and sure enough, it did, you know, I was always just struggling, you know, always permanently broke. But it was years later I did, uh, I was, the one thing I did do back then, I learned to play the bass guitar. and I got into a band and it took me away from hanging around on the streets and gave me a creative outlet. And I loved it, you know, I put a lot of energy into that at a young age and learned to play. And then later on, I was on the cabaret circuit and I watched a stage hypnotist and he was performing this hypnosis on the audience that looked so powerful. And from there, I wanted to learn it because I could see in that that I could fix a lot of my own dysfunction and uh, the addictions and uh, wounds and traumas, that kind of thing. So from there, it was that was the real epiphany, because when I realized that it took me on a path of healing and I had a thirst for knowledge and so over time, I did learn to love myself, you know, and, and, and build my self-esteem from the inside out. Because, you know, as a young kid, I was just told, I was constantly told I was stupid. That was the, you know, the big thing in my childhood. And I, I really believed it. I, I thought I was stupid. So I never speak up when I was in a group. I was very blocked. So I really worked on that when I learned hypnotherapy. And I, I really work on my self-confidence, my esteem, and, you know, learning to love that little boy that was you know growing up in a crazy world and that was the turning point so that you know i've just built on that momentum ever since powerful there's a quote from gerard way which is, one day your life will flash before your eyes make sure it's worth watching 
And so for people who are listening to you and feeling some kind of inspiration who may have also come from difficult beginnings, or maybe they even came from, I know people who were raised in amazing households and they've become addicts or they've had issues. So, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's relevant. It's not relevant. It's very interesting. Yeah. Our soul's journey, right? So go yeah. figure. Are there yeah. mindset hacks? Are there techniques that work that you can offer listeners who may be going through some challenges right now or have had a life pattern of challenges? I think the key thing is you have to be you want to, you know, if, if there's something, you know, big in you want to get over, it's really important to crystallize that in your conscious mind. And, um, you know, for me, a big thing was, you know, when I learned about hypnotherapy and I started to use the law of attraction, I wanted to create an abundant, happy life, you know, where I had material things as well, because, you know, I got sick of driving old bangers and living in, you know, crummy places. And so that was a big thing for me. So I, I wrote a list of things that I wanted to achieve, you know, a number of, you know, as a young man, and so I wanted these material things, you know, an Aston Martin, a big house and, and I wrote all these things down and I was, and every single day I, I built up this real determination within me. This, I had this fire in my belly and it came from the fact that I'd struggled so much and not had really anything going for me. And, and also, you know, to prove my headmaster wrong, you know, he, he told me I was stupid and the worst kid he'd had in school for 10 years. So when he kicked me out of 15, so, you know, I used all that in a positive way and I really built up this fire, this drive within me that I was going to succeed, I didn't know how, but I was determined to succeed and make something of my life. And so every day, every single day back then, I would do like an hour of self-hypnosis and, you know, I had these set of goals. And when I was in self-hypnosis, I used to project them out into the universe mm. and really fuse my feelings, put my feelings into them. You know, I'd imagine I was driving the car and I'd in, imagine that life was abundant and happy and all this kind of stuff and i really really got into it and to the point where my wife at the time she said to me that uh, the bed would actually vibrate when i got deep into those self-hypnosis sessions she could feel the bed vibrating because i'd go so deep with it and you know got immersed in it and i'd even do it when i was in the bath because i'd read somewhere that uh, projections are more powerful when you're in water That's so, so i just had my nose <laughs> sorry sorry for giving the listeners this image, but I, I just had my nose out the bath and I'd be projecting out this, these abundance affirmations when I was having a bath. And, mm -hmm. and I just, so it became a, a holistic journey. You know, when I was driving in the car, I'd turn the radio off and I'd be chanting mantras and, you know, uh, affirmations and that kind of thing and just immerse myself in it completely. And lo and behold, life started to change. I started to get more breaks. Opportunities came along. I met the right people at the right time. Started to make money for the first time, and um, it was it was amazing. You know, it was really amazing. And then because it started working, I thought, "Wow, I've created this," and it just, you know, I just I've never stopped. And so anyone can do that, you know. But it, you've got to kind of get that desire in your belly, you know. If it, whatever it is you want to do, if you want to. You know, become abundant or you want to lose weight or you want to get rid of the habit or an addiction you have to really get focused on that and give it all of your attention and you know get that determination first and um the clearing you know i'm sure we'll talk about this as well the clearing aspect is also really important yeah you know so absolutely yeah, that's, that's yeah. oh gosh i love that you just shared those really specific examples so, you know, cause I've dabbled in this and not fully realizing some of the technology I was using that it, why it worked. So for instance, I mean, I can say on an easy note, cause everybody knows about a vision board. I've had people say, Oh, pff, vision boards don't work, but you know, they did for me. I mean, I literally created a car down to the color and it was a weird color, but I knew I wanted it in forest green, the exact model. And everybody's like, 
you know, come on. I would go to dealerships and they'd say, it's going to be, that's a shot in the dark. And then I did get a call the next day going, that is so strange. Somebody just pulled in a forest green Lexus RC 430 and they want to sell it, you know, things like that. And it's like, yeah, of course. And yeah. uh, also without knowing this, it's so interesting. You would say bathtub because I had done one Los Angeles marathon, 26.2 miles. And when I was done with that marathon successfully, I thought, great, I can take that off my bucket list. But as life would have it, a number of circumstances brought me back into the training again for a second year. And I thought, well, I need a new goal. And I made my goal to lop off time, my finish time. I wanted to be right. shorter. So I just came up yeah. with a number and I thought 30 minutes. I researched it and it showed 30 minutes is very grand. It's a big goal to go after when you're doing 26.2 miles and you're just a, you know, you're not like a world-class runner or anything. But I, I, every night I trained, of course, physically on the outside world, but in the inside world, every night, two weeks before the actual marathon, I would take a bath and I would visualize myself coming around the final corner, seeing the clock exactly the time I wanted it, going through the finish line and feeling elated. And I did that night after night, very simple. And then came the day of the race. I guess much like that, I was in actuality, in reality, running around the corner, looked up at the clock, went through the finish line. And when they came, the volunteers came to take the chip off of my sneaker because I completed the race, I was crying. And everybody was alarmed, like, are you okay? And I said, no, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Because I took one hour off of my finish no. time. I mean, that was beyond. Wow. And I just said, that, that was the bath. That was the visualizations. <laughs> because left to my own devices, I, I don't know that that would have yeah. happened. Powerful That's stuff. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Because your mind doesn't distinguish between what's real and what's imagined. So if you're constantly visualizing yourself running at this faster time and, you know, to, you know, and, and doing that and you're doing it over and over again, when you come to do it for real, you've primed yourself. You're in a peak performance state. You know, all, all great athletes know this and they do that because they, you know, if you're a footballer or a runner or whatever it is, you need to peak at that moment. And it's really about getting your mind in the zone to, you know, mm -hmm. to, to really so that's amazing that you did that. I mean, an hour off from a marathon time is incredible. So yeah, and you know, it was so another, another hour oh. next year. I'll see you. Up the <laughs> <Kenyans next> year. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I don't know, but um, amazing. It, you know what I loved about it mostly is that it it was a doorway for me. It's like if it's possible with something like this and a physical race. Yeah what else is yeah. possible and all of a sudden the limitlessness was open so it makes me curious because earlier you brought up you know one of the things you help people with is weight loss and i would think that's one of the toughest subjects of all of the ones you could work on simply because you have to take the beast out at least three times right you have to eat at least unless you're going to fast and maybe have one meal a day but in general people eat yeah. three times or if they do smaller meals six times and I think when you keep opening yourself to interact with your drug of choice, it can be very difficult. So what results have you seen with weight loss? Like how do you use things like this to literally not just tame the beast, but to actually have a healing so food becomes fuel as opposed to a need? Yeah, that's an interesting question because it is probably one of the biggest uh, issues that I've seen clients for mm. uh, because, you know, so many people have dysfunctional relationships with food, you know, there's, you know, from and, their age, bodies. That's, and their bodies as well. Yeah. That's a big part of it. And so I've seen a lot of clients over the years for weight loss issues. And I always say that, you know, if you had 10 clients there that all had that issue, you'd have to, work with them each one of them in a different way because there's always a, a different root cause as to why they're why they've got the issue in the first place 
Mm. And you know, I've seen some clients who've uh, been abused at a young age, and so they've actually put on weight to make themselves, uh, in their own mind, unattractive to the opposite sex to not attract any attention. You know, you get things like that going on with the weight loss issues. Uh, sometimes, you know, people use food to push down emotions and um, you know to make themselves feel better, and you know, using sweet foods as a treat, that kind of thing. So. It was always a client therapy session that I'd, you know, do a lot of uh, analysis with to really find out what's at the heart of it. And and the key with that is, you know, again, you know, if the the right motivation was there to to get fit and healthy and to lose weight, then you know, more often than not, the sessions are successful. They they work. Um, but again, you know, sometimes you'd see clients who'd come because their partners had pushed them into going to see hypnotherapy and they weren't motivated in the right way. So they were, and they were, they could be harder sessions. So it's a very complex issue. Um, but, you know, I, I had other sessions. I had a thinking of the same theme. I had a celebrity session for a magazine in London where this magazine had sent me five celebrities, you know, varying sort of varying sort of uh, stature and um, each one of them had a, an addiction or a phobia and, and I had to fix them all for this editorial piece and the lead the lead celebrity is a lady called Andrea McLean she's quite she's well known in the UK she's on a daily TV show and she had a chocolate addiction mm. and it was so bad mm. every single day she'd eat a big bar of chocolate and she'd done that for years and years and she was kind of getting away with it she still looked good but you know, she was worried, you know, as you got older, it was going to take its toll. So I did this session in my publish, my publishing house up in London. And, and I was aware when I was speaking to her that there was some more, uh, you know, gratification from this sweet hit that she was getting from the sugar, you know, from the chocolate. It was more than just gratification. So I regressed her back to the first time that she felt this kind of uh, overwhelming impulse to eat chocolate all the time. And she went back to being a young kid. And what, what happened at that time? Her dad used to hide chocolate around the house. And her and her sister used to be on this mission to find it. And when they found it, they had this eureka moment. It was all exciting, but they couldn't eat it. Their dad wouldn't let them eat it. So she had all this stuff going on in her unconscious mind. And bring that into a conscious awareness and also changing the emotions she had attached to chocolate, all these positive and uh, forbidden feelings that she had emotions and that kind of thing uh, it was i was able to clear those con that conditioning that was driving it was kind of underpinning it, it was driving it and then i did an aversion technique so i got her to imagine chocolate mixed up with rotting fish and i got her to really smell it and you know you kind of when someone's in a trance state like that they can really get into that and, you, and it was powerful really powerful and she phoned me up a couple of weeks later she said i feel terrible i feel absolutely terrible i'm going through this cold turkey i haven't touched chocolate for two weeks but i feel awful because the first time her body was releasing it you know she was she was literally uh, yeah going cold turkey and she said that even if she saw a chocolate advert on the tv She'd feel nauseous. She'd want to gag. So the, the session worked so well. But it, it was the fact that I combined the, uh, the regression and the clearing part with her dad and also the aversion technique that made it work so well. If I'd just done the aversion technique, it might have worked for a while, but ultimately the drive from conditioning would have come back and she would have you know, drifted back into it. So that was it. She, she couldn't even watch adverts. It would make her throw up. And then I saw her about two months later at a photo shoot and we were filming in London and she said she'd never touched it again. And she still, you know, occasionally talks about it on the TV show. That's amazing. a great story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I, it makes a lot of sense when you describe needing to go in and remove whatever is the operating system you know, wipe yeah. it out. So there's that clean slate and you can put in a new program to run. Yeah, I think without creating nothing or no thing in that space, yeah. 
that's been the behavior pattern, whatever it is, it's hard to create on top of it. Yeah, that's the thing. And, and just to add to that, you know, the recordings, say my weight loss recording is very generalized. You know, it does help a lot of people, but there's no substitute for a one-to-one -one session. You know, if you've really got those, you know, uh, conditioned patterns of behavior running, mm. you know, so that's why the clearing stuff is so important. You know, it's, it's everything. Do you only work with celebrities these days? Do you still offer one-on-ones or do you have some other regular folk clientele? I tend to, um, nowadays, I do stuff for yeah, media and that kind of thing occasionally, but I'm so busy with the recordings because, you know, I'm literally selling a million recordings a year now. So it's, I'm so flat out with that, that it's, that's my focus now. You know, I've, I've seen thousands of clients over the years and I feel like I've done my apprenticeship and I've, you know, done my time doing that. And now I'm focused on the recordings. That's my way, you know, and if I make a recording, I'm so fortunate. I put it out there and it re reaches thousands of people. So I'm blessed. And, and if anyone wants a one-to-one -one session, as you know, I send them to Lee and, you know, Lee's a chip off the old block. And as you said, the acorn doesn't fall far. I'm really lucky that Lee's, you know, got that, he's got that gift. And so he's, he's seeing my, the clients that I can't see. Mm. Some of the work you're doing lately uses the technology we mentioned earlier, which is solfeggio frequencies and binaural beats. In fact, one of the ones I, of your hypnosis MP3s I listened to yesterday had both in it, both solfeggio uh, and binaural. I was like, I love it. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> I want to- Was that the three- 396 hertz That's one. exactly the one I did. Yeah. 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 So beautiful. Oh my gosh. And yeah. I want people who don't know about, I mean, I think at this point, probably most everybody's heard of it. Maybe many people understand it in depth, but can you talk a little bit about what happens healing wise or scientifically so folks understand why you imbue some of your recordings with this? Yeah, well, the, um, the solfagio frequencies are six main frequencies that uh, Gregorian monks used to chant to invoke certain states and also to clear certain uh, issues. And for example, that one, the 396 hertz, they would chant that frequency to release feelings of guilt and fear. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that's pretty powerful in, in all of us. You know, we all wherever you're at, you know, that's, we've all got elements of that in us. So, um, yeah, that was a really, and when the solfagio frequencies got rediscovered in the nineties by Dr. Len Horowitz and another doctor whose name escapes me, they wrote a book about it and they repopularized them. And myself and a shamanic friend at the time who I was hanging out with, who's a very gifted musician, we decided to make uh, meditations based on those six frequencies. And so you've got the combination of Ali's, Ali Caldwell's amazing music uh, because he wrote music for ayahuasca ceremonies that he was holding. And so he knew how to make real amazing frequency music. And so he made the music, we scripted a meditation together and, um, you know, imbued it with everything around the, each of the tones, each of the frequencies. And you also, you have that amazing alchemy of the music frequency and then my voice on the meditation. And, you know, it's kind of like when you get a band together and everyone's throwing in a little bit and it makes something greater than the sum total. And that's what we did. And, and those recordings have gone out there and even Dr. Horowitz, he wrote to us one day out the blue and he said, I've listened to a lot of frequencies, sulfate frequencies, he says, yours is spot on. Mm -hmm. And he even bought us at the time. He bought, he was buying them and selling them on his website. So we knew we'd, we'd got them right. And yeah, they're, they're powerful recordings. You know, we, we, you know, you feel the energy of them. There's a, that frequency, that tone, when you hear it, it just goes through every cell and fiber in your body. It's powerful stuff. You know, yesterday I had a sports medicine massage, which means they go after the fascia. It's pretty deep. It can be a little uncomfortable. 
while they're working yeah. out, you know, if you've got anything major going on. It was 90 minutes. And it was really interesting. It was my first time with this guy. God, he's good. He came highly recommended. And he explained to me at least 10 minutes after starting to work on my body, he said, first, I have to understand the lay of the land. I have to understand what's going on with your body. Now that I've got it and I'm going to start working on with you, give me one minute. I'm starting this solfeggio music and I'm picking something specifically to help heal you in a sound wave vibration while I work on you physically. I'm like, oh my God, this guy is in my tribe. This is so great that he's doing yeah. it and that he understands the technology that even when I'm laying on a massage table getting worked on, I can be also listening to this music, whether I pass yeah. out, you know, and it's subliminal or it's conscious, but that there's two things operating at once to really help me. Powerful. It's powerful. Yeah. When you've got that um, healing coming at you in, you know, in, in frequency and in physical, it's powerful, isn't it? Cause you're getting them, you know, it's mind, body, spirit, isn't it? Yeah. Powerful stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that's always the, the thing, you know, with the recordings, I try to put as much of that kind of thing into the recordings, you know, the, the, the feeling, the feeling I'm want to project out. I want to get across, you know, I really get into that. You know, it's like, I suppose, you know, when somebody plays a part, you know, they're acting, you, you kind of really get into it. And I try to do that in the meditation when I make a meditation, you know, really get into that feeling. It's yeah. Powerful stuff. Yeah. yeah. So this, this is ancient for folks who haven't dabbled in it before, as he was saying, it actually, uh, goes back, it's traced back to a medieval hymn by John John the Baptist. That's how old solfeggio is. And the original wow. solfeggio six-tone scale yeah. was developed by a Benedictine monk. And I, I yeah. think it's something like do, re, mi, fa, so, la. And then I think something like that. But it's it yeah. definitely starts do, re, mi, fa. And then I'm not sure where it skips because obviously we have a seventh in our tones today yeah yeah it's um yeah the the frequencies are i know uh is is ut ut is the first one isn't it it's similar to yes. that but yeah the ut yeah that's it and they go from this but yeah so yeah there's so much so much in those tones in those frequencies you know there's um you know i'm never one of those who needs to sort of scientifically understand it i'm never good at kind of explaining that side of it it's i kind of feel it i know i know that it works i trust that it works and i project that out you know that's the thing i i've got a brother my youngest brother's very scientific mm. and he always needs to know how things work and he wants to know but i just know if i sense something works i go with my gut feeling i trust it and that's good enough for me without needing to know the mechanics of it and when we were kids we'd, we'd go christmas i always remember christmas day we I'd be playing with my toys. I'd go in to see him and he'd taken his toys apart because he needed to know how they worked. So <sighs> it was just the way we were wired up as young kids, you know, and it's still with us now. I take the mickey out of him now for that, you know. That's hilarious. What did he end up doing with his life? He's um, in IT, no surprise. He, he, he fixes people's computers and, uh, yeah, builds software, that kind of stuff. Perfect. Oh, my God. That's so very so mechanical. Well, I know that you and I have ceremonies in um, common and just last week, and I did my first San Pedro ceremony. Have you done San Pedro, the cactus yet? Um, only microdosed it, okay. microdosed it. <laughs> but um, yeah, just never really had the opportunity. Um, uh, but some, funny enough, Nicola, my wife, said to me today that she's just connected with somebody who, who holds ceremonies where we live in Portugal. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, wow, that's that's interesting. So, you know, is the when the student's ready, the teacher will arrive and oh, really? it happens, especially with medicine. So you've I know you've done ayahuasca and probably different variations from whatever country, but you've not yet outside of microdosing tried the San Pedro. No, no, yeah. I, I'm now it's on my sort of radar with this guy, then I'll research it and look into it. And yeah, it's and different, yeah. it's really different it, than ayahuasca, is it? Very, really, yeah, yes. Is it as intense? Is it as powerful? Well, here's the thing 
It depends on the shaman, as you know. It depends on the brew that they create, because not all brews are alike. And then it depends on the state of mind and being that you're in. Probably if I did it five more times with different people, it would be completely different. I will say in general... And it'll be interesting because I'm sure people will weigh in and have different points of view and they'll all be valid. My point of view, and I've only done it once, is that I much prefer ayahuasca. And um, uh, let's see, I went into it thinking, oh, you know, it's like the happy lighter version right? It's like ayahuasca light and think, but you know, it wasn't like that at all. Although I also want to say, here's what's amazing. Uh, I could talk about all the ways I didn't feel like I went through quite a gestalt or an awakening in a divine aspect like I did with ayahuasca or yahe, et cetera. However, that's not true at all because a lot of it in retrospect, and I'm still, it hasn't even been a week, so I'm still incorporating, but there were some really major things that I became aware of. And I literally, the day after the ceremony came out and started making phone calls to clean up stuff. I started reaching out. I started setting up appointments. There were things I had to handle, period. Mm -hmm. So that was wonderful. And that means A lot of great stuff happened. And the other thing was some interesting letting goes. Some because I came in with some physical stuff I wanted to release. And I'm on it now. I'm I mentioned the massage and there's other things, but I'm on it. I realized no, I'm done with this. I whatever this is needs to go. We need to work out. Um and one of the interesting things, like I I know this was was wasn't a huge revelation, but what was really beautiful was releasing, I think, the energy around it. I'm a child of the Holocaust. Well, how do I say this? My father was a child of the Holocaust. And he has an incredible story about, um, they call what he went through the hidden children. So he was hidden as a little Jewish boy in churches uh, change, they had to change his identity of five years old running all around, you know, in, in orphanages that were Christian as a Jew and changing his name. And in the middle of the night, they'd come and get he and his brother and say, the Nazis found out about you. We have to flee. You have to go to another orphanage. So over and over, you know, he had a lot of trauma around yeah. this. And so they, there's this thing called the second generation. Yeah. And I know about all this, so none of this is a surprise, but during the medicine, I could feel the heaviness of what didn't belong to me, but then I moved it under, and I just, you know, I took it, it seemed so simple at the time, but just sort of took it out and said, you know, this doesn't belong to me, it doesn't help me, I'm not helping anybody, and I just return it to sender with love and consciousness attached. And just, yeah, yeah. you know, let it go. And it seemed. That's amazing. So amazing. Simple. It's, um, I don't know if you can still hear me, Debbie. It's, uh, you've frozen on the screen. So hopefully it will correct itself. Yeah. I hear you. Wonderful. Uh, I'll keep talking just in case you can. Hmm. It happens with ayahuasca. Are you, did you hear me, Debbie? Because I lost you for a minute. Um, no, I think you're you're going a little bit in and out, um, and even your picture yeah. is getting very dim. I've also yeah. Suddenly, it's it's the time of year in the UK where it suddenly gets dark, and I'm in. As I said, I'm travelling. I'm not my normal place, so I couldn't set it up how I wanted it. But um, yeah, just repeat. Yeah, that. I'm getting. Yeah, well, the, that that's an amazing story you just told there because. Ayahuasca, the plant medicine, does pretty much the same thing. And I had this amazing experience in one of my ceremonies where I was getting messages from my patriarchal downline. Mm. And I might have, sorry if I told this story last time, but it is one that sticks with me and it's relevant to what you just said. It's where I saw my father, my grandfather, his father as like the faces in Mount Rushmore, like the presidents. And that's how they were communicating me. It was a really weird one. Um, and they were saying to me, 
keep doing what you're doing because you're healing the family karma. Mm. And, you know, going back in my patriarchal downline, they were bookmakers, boxers, gamblers, wheeler and dealers, ducker and divers. You know, they, they didn't always make their money in the best way. So I, you know, for the first time in the, the lineage, I'm healing. I'm, I'm projecting out healing and doing good work in, in that way. So I've got this really strong message. Keep doing what you're doing because you're healing the family karma. And up until that point, I'd never really been aware of that concept. I'd never really heard of it. But then I read about it afterwards, and it's a byproduct of ayahuasca and the ceremonies. So how amazing that you were doing the same in your San Pedro ceremony. You were healing your family downline in, in a similar kind of way. You know, it's and how amazing that there are plants in this world that allow you to do that. It's mind blowing. You know. Yeah. We could, we could, you know, every person on this planet could absolutely shine and blossom and heal from the inside out if we were allowed to, if we, if there weren't these dark pharmaceutical forces that are controlling things, you know, that, that's the reality, you know, this, this battle between dark and light is in full flow now and, you know, the healers know it, the healers know what we could have and what, how the world could be, how we could all exist. You know, but we're, you know, we're, we're battling this, these other energies, but yeah, I went off track a little bit there, but that's the ultimate what's going on, isn't it? Yeah. And it's interesting you would bring up healers. I have had a couple of occasions where I know people who are pretty powerful healers and they have never done ayahuasca, but they speak about it as though they have. <laughs> with incredible intimacy just because they read energy and it's like no i really don't think that's a good thing to do and here's why and they seem to have all this very specific information but i it actually bothers me because i think how there is no way you can talk about something that you've not tried it's obviously organic it's a plant right it's not lsd not a chemical yeah. it's literally a plant and once the plant is in you, the beautiful thing about the plant is it still lives in you. It will still communicate. I made yeah. sure before I went to do the, um, we have a lot of San Pedro cactus around here. So the night before, because I was scared. I'm always scared before I do something like that. Like, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. And so I went out and I... Oh, I put, sorry. It's your, a journey into the unknown, isn't it? It's very yeah, unknown. just delayed, don't we? Yeah. And I put my hands on the cactus, not on the thorny bark, but, you know, just actually on the beautiful green cactus. And I just did some prayer with it and let it know what my intentions were. And I asked it for help and guidance and just had a whole connection with, yeah. with it. And I had heard that if you spit into the soil and then put water in it, your energy gets into the plant and it into you. Obviously, the next day it would literally be in me. So yeah. that's what I did. And I really did feel held. I really did feel taken wow. care of and that I had yeah. this connection. I made sure the day after to go out and thank it as well. You know, thank you for yeah. being with me and for what yeah, was revealed. A, yeah, that's an important part, isn't it? The blessings and the respect you give to the the plant you know for what it's done for you and um yeah it's it's an amazing thing i've got a ceremony i'm booked in for a ceremony in about a month's time back in portugal oh. i've met a shaman there you know felt really ready to journey again and i've met this guy and he's an amazing shaman so i'm, I'm booked in and and the thing is as soon as you make that commitment to the ceremony things start to come up it's amazing you start to have thing issues coming up in you because they're ready to be healed and it's almost like the medicine is there to it starts that process early mm -hmm. and um it's an amazing thing you know, the, the the intelligence of it is something that you know i don't fully understand and you know but i've seen it in amazing ways and and talking about lee again he would he journeyed a couple of weeks ago there was an opportunity to do a ceremony here not far from here where i'm staying uh, with a friend of his and he took it and he went and he had an amazing journey you know tough he said it was really tough at times it was all all guys mm -hmm. and they were outdoors it was through the afternoon rather than through the night mm -hmm. and he said they're all outdoors in this big garden 
and he said it was you know tough you know the guys having really tough experiences and but he he was ready for it he's so mentally prepared for it and went through it and had an amazing time and i've noticed that was two weeks ago and i've had conversations with lee where he's just dropping these knowledge bombs mm -hmm. and he doesn't know he's doing it but i'm hearing this wisdom in him that is you know higher higher wisdom that not that he didn't have before but it's just the medicine's given him something extra you know and he's his whole perspective on what's going on today you know he's given me sort of insights on a spiritual level as to what's happening in the world at the moment mm. and you know that you how the easiest way to understand it is from an energetic viewpoint and um yeah we've had some amazing conversations so it's like you said you know that it stays with you that the experience of the medicine and the wisdom that you experience in the ceremony it stays with you and it just you know you grow and you get lighter and you know you've cleared stuff within you and you just move on it's like a you know graduation almost what is different about the one you're going to be doing in a month besides the shaman is the is the um, actual plant you're going to be drinking different or what what attracted you um well I, what it was i'd uh i'd spoken to nicola my wife and she's never journeyed before and she was always quite a good girl when she was young so she never took drugs or never drank she, she does in nightclubs and that kind of thing but she was never a boozer or, or took drugs and but she said she feels ready you know the medicine's calling her so we were talking about it and then i put i put my barbecue up for sale and um lo and behold this gentleman comes along who's a shaman and wants to buy it and he recognized me because he'd seen me in the film the time of the sixth son i had a tiny little part in this film and he saw he recognized me from this film and said oh you know so i said to him look i told everyone else it had sold and i said look come along and he sat in my back garden with his wife and we just spoke for two hours about you know medicine and healing and spirituality <clears throat> you know i forgot all about the barbecue <laughs> and, and i suddenly thought you know i've been and he holds ceremonies 25 minutes up the road from where I am. And he's spent time out in Peru. And, you know, he's, he's a real strong, solid guy. And I trusted him. And so I thought, wow, that's amazing. You know, me and Nick have been talking about it. And all of a sudden, this shaman comes along to get my barbecue. And he, I lo and behold. So that's the thing. When you're ready, you put it out there. Yeah. And I say to people, you know, meditate on it. If you really want to, you'll find the right shaman or the right opportunity if you meditate project it out there and um so yeah we've been up to his place and he lives in this lovely little valley up in the hills in land a bit he's got a lake on his land and mm. it's an amazing place a little dojo and we're gonna journey in there in there and nick's going a week before me and i'm a week after so oh wow can't wait can't wait oh, yeah, really up for oh my gosh i am so excited for nicola and her first experience yeah. congratulations in advance and you know what as well debbie the thing is you know uh, jason the shaman he sent us through a list of things we've got to do and mm -hmm. i've never had this before but he said so a month before you've got to really start to refine your diet you know no spices no garlic no salt no stuff like that no nookie either with sex is off the agenda so it's really <laughs> are you having trouble yeah. with that yeah big time yeah <laughs> i love my wife mm. so um so yeah you know all of those things but you know so it's a different approach so we're we're rolling with it we're going with that you know if that's the way he wants to roll the ceremony i'm trying it's a new new experience for us but oh yeah, that, yeah well, so we're, you know, that's very true i mean every ceremony i've ever done that's what i've received from the shaman um and you know six seven however many times in different places i've done it yeah uh, is the dieta that is really important and that um, we, we've been listening to books on ayahuasca and San Pedro from a shaman. It's been great uh, books on Audible. And they talk about the chemical interaction. So the reason why no spice, no garlic, no meat, no dairy, no alcohol, no coffee, and yeah. people, may, people may be going, oh my God, I die. You don't. Actually, it's fantastic. 
you basically you can have yeah. fish, you can have seafood, you can have uh, salads, vegetables, smoothies. I mean, only the hardest yeah. thing for me always is the coffee. I'm like, Meh. maybe coffee and sex too. But it's like, um, yeah, it's interesting. I'm coffee first. It's so, yeah, coffee. <laughs> I'm showing my true <laughs> colors here. But I really love my daily coffee. And it had impact yeah. on me this time to not. But still, I follow yeah. the diet. Because you also, as much as possible, don't want to get nauseous or have to expel or purge. And yeah. it also gives you the best, cleanest experience. So your body is a conduit for the plant medicine in the most yeah. that's it yeah it's that's the, the thing isn't it and um it's a good focus you know if you do want to give up anything or get get clean you know having a goal to aim for like this in a month's time you know we're we're really up for it and nicola's been totally on it and you know mine's a week after her so i'm just getting my head around it now and getting focused on those things but yeah i'll, I'll do that i want I want to have the best possible experience and clear as much stuff as I can. And so I'll go into it, you know, really focused and on this stuff and, you know, yeah, it's going to be amazing. And I, I had a friend of mine who um, I was living in the UK at the time. He was living in Spain. And when I first told him about ayahuasca, he was, he, he was so drawn to it. He wanted to do it. And he was like a, a real hippie from the 60s you know so he'd done a lot of acid in his younger life and he was up for it but he knew what it was all about you know he knew it was a spirit you know a spiritual journey and he knew the therapeutic benefits of it and i'll never forget when he came over he he walked into the room and he had all these white robes on he looked like gandhi he, he was he had bald head he was brown as a berry from being in spain and um he was so prepared for it He'd, he was so up for it, so ready for the medicine that when he drank, he just soared into it and he had the most amazing experience. And it's the preparation before is a big part of it. It's a really important part. So I'm taking it more serious this time than I've ever done. And, you know, if this is helpful to Nicola, I, you know, I'm still scared when I do it. So I felt... Yeah. Uh, I felt a lot coming up. You know, we did social distancing, masks, outdoors, also in the day, like you're describing for the San Pedro ceremony. And because I'd never done it before, I was scared. And I was sitting and I felt, before I drank, I felt it ramping up. And I could feel there was a precipice where it's like, okay, this could go full launch into panic. And so... Yeah. You know, it's like in those moments, I mean, we even have lucid moments of wisdom pre-drinking yeah. because immediately the next thought is you have a choice. You're at a path, right? A crossroads. You could either launch yourself like, woohoo, panicville, here we come. Or you do the other, which is to not yeah. know, be safe anyway, and jump. And I thought, yeah. I came this far. Clearly, I want it. Clearly, it calls to me. And there is a reason yeah. I have to trust the reason I don't have to know, even though I want to, and just jump. And it's like the moment I make that choice, there's this abandon, right? Just glug, 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 glug. <laughs> I did everything they told me to do and the way they told me to do it, because it's quite disgusting, you know, close your nose, just get it wow. down before it coagulates. And I did. And that was smart. That was really smart. Um, yeah. And then let the games begin, you know, then the journey is going to begin for 10 hours. It's like, um, yeah. it's the best therapy in the world. And that's it. You know, even if you're, even if it frightens you, you know, if it doesn't frighten you, there's something wrong with you. It yeah. should do because you're, you know, you're going on a journey into the unknown, you know, and um, you don't know what's going to come up, you know, so it's, it's good to have a bit of that fear, you know, it focuses your mind mm. and um yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing. And I know one of my son's friends who journeyed with it years ago when he, when he first took it. And uh, he, he was a tough lad, this kid. He was you know, a bit of a brawler. He was always getting in fights in nightclubs. And he knew he wanted to fix this part of him. And mm. so when he went down there with Lee back, back then, he drank the medicine. And they said for two hours, he just 
He stood in the corner saying, who the F am I? Who the F am I? He didn't know who he was. And he was just saying this over and over like a mantra. Mm -hmm. And um, because what happened to him for the first time in his life, he was outside of his ego, beyond his identity and his personality. And just didn't know who he was. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's powerful. You know, it takes you into places that, you know, realms and places that you don't, you're not aware of at times, you know, scary, scary places. So you, it's good to be a little bit frightened of it. And, you know, I will, you know, as the time gets closer to the medicine, this is a new ceremony, a new experience, a new place. You know, I'll, I'll have that fear up in me. But I'll, I'll use it in a positive way. I feel like every year, Glenn, is sort of has a theme. I've noticed that, that there's some kind of theme, something I'm supposed to learn, something I'm incorporating. And, and I love that. Usually it's obviously revealed to me. I mean, I could choose a theme and that's fine, but usually themes choose themselves at a soul level. And I know, I know what mine is this year is what's the most important thing that you've been learning this year? What's the thing that's come up for you the most to learn from and deal with? I suppose for me, the biggest thing this year in particular, it's kind of brought it to the surface more, is for me that, you know, how important family is. I know that's probably a bit of a cliche, but I was somebody who grew up in a very, very dysfunctional and violent household. So I, did, I never had that lesson at the beginning. You know, and I'm, I'm still very disconnected. My dad's still alive. My mum's not. I'm very disconnected from my father. So I, I never had that family thing, you know, that connect. So I was all, as a young kid, I was always very independent. I, I, you know, I'd run away from home when I was 12 and sleep rough on the streets. And, you know, and, and I survived on my own because I just built up this independence. And I've always been very independent. And and my my wife said to me, you know, that, it's times you don't need anyone. It's like you don't need anyone, but the, you know, in some ways that's a good thing because you're very independent, but the downside of that is that you push people away. And that's been a theme for me. So for me to really embrace family and to really, uh, you know, realize the importance of family has been a bit of a breakthrough for me. You know, it's been a real big thing. So I think this year, you know, with the lockdown and everything, and it made me, it really made me, realize that and value it as well and and realize what an amazing thing you know just having a being in a little family unit with your your wife and your kids and you know my oldest son lee what an amazing blessing that is and i love that you know so the relationship thing you know that's that's been the most important thing for me this year I can, want to drive can't. people to glennharold.com if they want more information on you, G-L-E-N-N-H-A-R-R-O-L-D.com. And is there anything yeah. at the end, Glenn, here that you'd like to say to the listeners? Yeah, I just think as, you know, we've been talking about, you know, the, the, the work you do on yourself is the most important thing you can do in this life, the clearing work. Because you know, we've incarnated into this, you know, crazy world of dark and light and it's battle going on and, you know, but we've chosen to incarnate at this time with all its challenges. And it's, you know, life has never been more challenging than it is at the moment. It's people are very divided and struggling in different ways. But, you know, it's a really heroic journey. I read this once years ago, you know, that our souls have chosen a really heroic path. And here we are, we've rocked up, you know, we've, our chest out you know shoulders shoulders out and we're we're here you know we're doing the best we can in this world and trying to get as clear and light as we can so and i think you know the way to really navigate your way through this life is to get as clear as you possibly can through through hypnotherapy through you know kinesiology other therapies plant medicine you know san pedro ayahuasca whatever it is that calls you you know, get as clear as you can, because this is the opportunity to really come back to that person, you know, to be the person that you're supposed to be and to get lighter and freer. 
and and that's it you know and i'll be doing this work when i'm 90 i'll, I'll never stop and I, I you're i can tell that you're on that same path you're constantly looking for new ways to get clearer and move forward and you know we're both on it nick, me and nick and and it's great because the rewards are amazing you know the rewards are amazing and i want to check out and ascend and you know experience a higher vibrational future lifetime mm. so i think that's how it works i think you know whatever your vibration is when you check out of this planet you're gonna uh, connect on a uh, in another dimension at that same vibration Oh, I'm so grateful come. you came back on the show. This is again been so fast, uh, a time to spend together, and um, yeah, I just enjoy you so much. I I really love the conversation. Yeah, I, I feel the same. Yeah, I feel the same. You know, we we, you know, um, I think yeah, being musicians, you know, and the, the experiences we've had, you we've shared, you know, we're on on a similar understanding and yes it's great it's easy, so easy to chat with you so anytime debbie anytime mm. thank you yeah cool music really came up for me in this last ceremony too and i just got it you know the shaman said to me i used to be a really great violin player when i was a kid i was you know all county orchestra and stuff and you know then i turned 16 and there, other things became important to me and i left lessons and i left the violin and as you know i was a singer for most of my professional life and then i i stopped doing that to do podcasting radio and books and it's been an interesting journey and i had that feeling of like where does that go when we stop it like that we stop the violin at 16 we stop singing you know fully as an adult and and, you know, and I talked about it uh, post ceremony and the shaman said to me, it doesn't go, it is still there and you can start doing violin lessons. Yes, it'll be something and maybe harder than when you were a kid, but you could start that again. And although, you know, I'm, the jury's still out on that. I'm not sure how I feel about, you know, having to get back into lessons. I know what it would take. But the singing, it's like, oh, I still have a voice. So I immediately started pulling up ceremony songs and looking at sheet music. And I started practicing, you know, now it's amazing what's online and available. I am going to start doing that again. So that was something that came up through me was the, my love of music and, and missing it in my life. So, yeah. yeah. Obviously such an important part of your life and you never lose that, you know, you, you know, not I'm, for me, you know, I, I loved writing songs and creating music and I'm not doing that at the moment, but at some point I'm sure I'll come back to it because when you get so much from it, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's always there, isn't it? <laughs> I think just the timing has to be right. You know, at the moment I'm very, I've been really focused on my career for the last sort of year and, getting more webinars and being, being more visual with it <coughs> so um but the music will come back and you know it's when when you're ready and yeah that's it when the music is ready the student appears <laughs> that's it. Totally that too ready. oh gosh folks to find out more about him you can join his member website glennharrell.com highly recommended it's one of the only things and i'm you know i'm not getting paid to say this it's one of the, literally the only things and people i can listen to that a creates a difference and b actually allows me to surrender and go deep into the hypnotic state um just a lot of people out there of recordings it's like god bless them but it actually irritates me but but glenn is glenn is the real deal it's a reason why he's world renowned I end the show with this quote from Mark Twain. Kindness is a language that the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Subscribe to the show, leave us a review, please, so others can find the conversation. Share this show with friends and family. The upcoming guest on Dare to Dream next week is Denise Collette. She is a profound healer who runs core trauma healing created for healing from childhood trauma and addiction her energy work is extremely special and deep she's highly gifted i have experienced it firsthand through her and with her so definitely tune in to find out what is possible for you to heal 
some core trauma or addiction. You can enjoy this show on all the podcast sites, Apple Podcasts in particular, and many others, as well as youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Thank you so much for joining us today on the show. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. And if ever there was a time in this planet to dream and create your dreams, it is now. We need you. Thanks for joining.